I'm joined now by General Sir Peter Cosgrove, who even before he became our 26th Governor-General in 2014, had met and spent considerable time with Prince Philip and, of course, the Queen. Sir Peter, thank you very much for coming in. It's good to be with you on a very sad occasion, but by the same token, I think uh, you've struck the note that we are uh, celebrating a life well lived and a contribution marvellously made. You know, one of the things that I heard you say was that typically, and I think uh, the late uh, Prince Philip would, would agree with this, is the races and the footy <laughs> went on. Yes. Uh, that's probably the way he would have wanted it to be. Uh, uh, he, he resonates with Australians. His memory now resonates with Australia. Why do you think that is? He spent a lot of time here, but that is not the sole reason, right? No, I, I think I think it's his innate nature. I mean, uh, sure, he, he knows this place and, and came back here with joy each time he came. Uh, but he liked us, and, and uh, Australians are shrewd enough to know that. They see when they are interacting with somebody. He was the, the man of the quip. So, you know, in that dynamic duo, which was a majesty and, and, the, and the prince consort... Um, uh, he, he was the one who would, with the crowd, say the irreverent thing or the thing that would get people laughing. So the Queen, with her marvellous dignity uh, and her friendly nature, would be the person they'd come to see. But also, we never saw the Queen here without uh, her husband. That's right. In 1985, you had a meeting with Prince Philip, but... It was when you were in uniform, right? Tell us about how that happened. I, he was the first member of the royal family I ever met. I was in uh, the UK on posting and there was a garden party. They have these garden parties at Buckingham Palace. You apply for a ticket, you get a ticket, you go there. And then the ushers run around uh, spotting people they think might be interesting for the royal family to meet. And they haul you out and park you in the middle of what is like a human laneway of other people looking on. And the royal person comes down and says hello to you uh, and progresses down to group after group after group. We were one of those. And my wife especially wanted to uh, meet um, the Duke of Edinburgh because when she was a child and they made that first tour, she was standing by the roadside in uh, the uh, National Park at Sutherland uh, and here comes the royal limousine. And she wanted to see the Queen, but there on her side of the car, as it was coming past at fair speed, was the Duke. And he looked out and saw this little girl. She was then, a, you know, an infant. Uh, and she, she had a big dolly. And she's standing there looking like this. And the, she never forgot that uh, the Duke of Edinburgh poked the Queen in the arm and said, look, look at the little girl. And there she's holding up the dolly. And did you get to tell that story yes, to the Queen and Philip later? Oh, yeah, another time with more leisure, yeah. but uh, Decades later? Yeah, my, my wife uh, had a bit of hero, hero worship going for, uh, for <laughs> Philip. Yeah. And just before you became Governor General, you had lunch yep. with the pair. How did yep. that go? Oh, well, we were on our best behaviour, as you might imagine, trying to uh, exude this sense of savoir faire and all the rest. <laughs> but you are having, uh, a, a, you know, two couples, that's all, uh, uh, having lunch together. And it was... They put us at ease. Um, and, you know, you, you're never fully at ease. But it was relaxed. And the Queen and, and Prince Philip made us feel extraordinarily welcome. I wanted to feed the corgis uh, little biscuits. The Queen was snapping off bits of cracker at the cheese and biscuits time in, in the lunch and feeding them to the doggies and corgis that were coming around. And I thought, well, that looks like a good idea. And I snapped off a piece of uh, cracker and I offered it. I asked the Queen's permission. She said, you can try. Oh. So I put the cracker down and the... Um, and the dog just looked at me like, you know, who are you? <laughs> so I, uh, I, I was disappointed and the Queen had a smile, so I asked the Queen, well, you, I'll give you the cracker. And she fed it to the puppy. <laughs> yeah. But it was Only so... Only one master. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. It was so natural. And the, and the, the chat around the table was uh, on everyday things and their visits to Australia. It was so welcoming. I, we loved it and it set us off on a really wonderful uh, five years where we saw... Uh, the Queen and the Duke on numerous occasions. And then you caught up afterwards at Balmoral for a picnic. Oh, yeah. There must have been a few beers at the picnic. Tell me that. Oh, well, yes. It was... Uh, uh, we, it had been preordained. We knew we might get asked to go down with the family, not just the Queen and the Duke, but extended members of the family down to this uh, picnic hut out on the, the estate. We went down there and it was a self-help job, that uh, uh, Tupperware and Eskies and that sort of thing... There weren't any staff. 
So we all just rushed around bringing in eskies. And, really? Yes. And the Queen was mum. The Queen uh, uh, was no longer the lady being served, which you would normally expect. She was doing all that you... How you, refreshing is that, Absolutely. Peter? And we were jumping out of our skin. And the thing about Prince Philip was that there he was, he would have been 97 then, and he'd had his bouts of ill health, and he was spry. Uh, we watched this 97-year-old stepping up and down from his chair. Now, I'm a lot younger than him, and I creak and groan when I get <laughs> up out of chairs, but he was lively and very engaged. He was surrounded by his kids and grandkids. In his element. And it was fabulous. And great-grandkids, yeah. Yeah, fabulous stories. General Sir Peter Cosgrove, thank you very much for coming in. My pleasure.